The men's semifinals here with the players champion Juan Santos up against Rudy Cruz, both members of the Fab Four from the World Players of Handball. You see the referee is Mark Zamora here. My name is Dave Vincent. Welcome to this live broadcast from Los Caballeros Sports Village in One, Fountain seven, Valley, zero. California. Referee's just yelling as loud as he possibly can here. He doesn't have to do that. The courts are actually echoing back. The players can hear every word you say and plus those from the fans too. It's just the way that this court is constructed. It picks up everything and that ball had Rudy Cruz leaning to the right. Juan Santos went out the door to the left. I like in big ball when they call that ball that goes out the left door a side out and I believe they should be doing that here at this tournament but they're not. Two, serving one. Are we going to be able to deal with this, these announcements, Dave, for an entire match? No, I can't. I don't understand why our audio is so loud on the referee yelling well, I, like that. I believe it's the referee that's so loud. One, don't really understand that. He doesn't need to yell like this. The, ref, the, the players can hear it with a whisper, <laughs> the echoing. The echoing of that sound to the players is deafening. And to the announcers. Well, we're not in the military anymore. It feels yeah. like we are. Juan Santos, of course, is going to go into the Air National Guard. Mm. And so maybe he three, likes this. Score here is 3-2. to two. Ricky Ruiz was telling me that Rudy Cruz is playing some really good handball right now and has a chance to take down Juan Santos. Juan Santos, Dave, is known as a pass shot artist. Just a nice guy. Here he is serving. He is an incredibly humble and sweet Two, young kid. He started off the season, the big ball season, ranked fourth just off of his name alone after not having any big wins, and then he ended up winning three out of the four stops. So it's kind of like a preseason football poll? Very similar to that. He basically was on everyone's radar, but he's never won a tournament saying this kid's a breakthrough player. He ends up winning three out of the four stops and becoming the player's champion, starting off with the rankings at four. They had to start somewhere. So there was a very subjective ranking system at the beginning. It gave everyone an equal chance, although he basically, when I say he was started off as four, he had no points. Everyone started off with zero points. He was just seated fourth mm -hmm. at a tournament where he ended up winning the first stop. So he was the number one player for the whole season. And he never really looked back. See the referee calling avoidable here. That's what I find is very difficult, Dave. You didn't see the play, but it, it is not traditional for the player to sweep back through and get in the way of the players. And as soon as they are allowed to do it in other tournaments, not allowed to do it in this tournament. Referee calling avoidable. And you see no arguing from Juan Santos on that avoidable call from the referee. Juan nor Rudy Cruz have probably ever had that call ever implemented. I think in big ball there's just different rules. You also see that in New York with the one wall rules where they're allowed to block. That's one of the reasons why you have that rule in one wall New York play. I don't know how fair it is for these players to play one set of rules for their whole lives and then have something completely different here at the U.S. Open. You see Rudy Cruz do that half dive, wearing the orange shoes. That's his traditional look. We're all together at four. Wow. Referee is just completely annoying here. I think we can just unmike the referee and just put a, the court sounds will pick it up. I mean, it's that bad. Well, Dave, you and I don't always share the same neuroses, but right now, I believe we're actually on the same page for once. Well, the court sounds will pick up the referee yelling at the top of his lungs that the score is tied at five. Dave, we, we are seeing some strange stuff here where referees calling avoidable hinders when a player sweeps back through, which you know, I, I, I tend to agree with the fact that the players do that too much. And we've even talked to this referee in the past about calling that play. 
but if it's actually not an avoidable, it's, it's if a player sweeps through underneath you and the ball's over his head on a lob, it, I don't believe it's an avoidable at all. It's like a misuse of the term. There was a strange bounce right there, but it was a side out as Juan Santos tops that ball and slides it down the wall. Oh, look at that ball just barely stay in. That's an amazing serve. Santos got a little too tricky there, though. And there's a side out. Rudy Cruz is one of the top four players in all of big ball here in Southern California, and the world for that matter, on the three-wall court. He's a great guy, too. Really nice individual. Never see him argue. In fact, both of these players are Very soft-spoken. I like that shot right there, the one that clips the upper wall. And it's another point for Rudy Cruz. Rudy's had some good wins this year, some really bad losses. But in the end, he was ranked fourth. And Dave Juan is such an exceptional player in the front court. Having a chance to talk to him, Dave, in the booth as he picked up some of his free swag, I believe you call it, his yellow jersey. He's the kind of kid, Dave, that will never say anything bad about anybody. He won't criticize anyone else's game. Similar, Dave, to Luis Moreno in that way, I believe. I find him very, very similar. Mm. All right, there's an avoidable hinder. You saw I one earlier. The call there. Yeah, that, that one was speed. But here's the problem that I have. Mm -hmm. That is allowed 100% of the time at the park, at major tournaments, except for this tournament. They're enforcing it. These players don't even know that that's not even allowed. And But, but they're also not going to argue. These two will not argue because they don't argue calls with the referee. But if a referee warns a player 100 times, it doesn't do anything. When you start making the calls, you start changing the culture. I believe, Dave, this is the right way to approach it if you do want to make that change. Well, if you would rather. I don't just think that change to needs to be made. I think it's a, it's a traditional part of the game. It's just like going to a one wall player in New York and saying, we're not going to allow you to do block calls, block plays anymore. We're going to change the complex. So that, why would you have to change it? Is well, it I, broken? I believe, Dave, that the rules here are virtually the same as. The small ball. I don't think rules. so. I don't think they should be the same. Well, that's a that's your interpretation. I mean, but, but the one wall rules actually are written differently in the rule book. Well, now, why you would you try? You're never ever going to change the culture of a whole culture. Yeah, you can. No, I don't think you can. Not with one can. referee on one match. You're not going to. The next ref won't call it. That's the problem. If this is the same ref every single time, then maybe so. Well, is he on a personal vendetta to change? Big this ball. This is the kernel of referees, though. He's actually appointed himself. Well, this referee doesn't play big ball, and he doesn't attend big ball events. Hmm. This is a small ball referee who's trying to impose a small ball game into the culture of the big ball community. Now, though I do agree with the actual call itself as technically being right, these players have just never had to play that way before. I don't know if you want to teach somebody to play a certain rule at a major championship when they didn't even know coming into it, you're going to start calling those plays. I mean, this has to be disclosed, I believe. Well, we can only talk about a call that happened 10 minutes ago for so long. I know that you'd like to keep talking about it, but Dave, the Juan Santos serve is absolutely phenomenal. How does he create that kind of angle on a serve that goes out the door? This isn't a ball, Dave, that necessarily jumps off the front wall with a lot of natural, yet he's able to hit the serve within six inches of the sideline, and Rudy Cruz is returning the ball, literally, Dave, from six feet off the court. And then Juan Santos is waiting for it and just paddles the ball right down the right side wall. Well, what I find amazing is that Santos, in early on in his career, would go into the court with a bucket of balls and just serve that ball out the door and try to hit that two-inch line. He comes in and stands to the right side, serves over to the left, tries to get it to come out that door, and he practiced a 1,000 a day, would go retrieve the balls, put them back in the bucket, and the next time he would try to clip the sidewall. And you saw already Rick, uh, Rudy Cruz looking to the left, ball hits the sidewall, goes completely to the right, and it's th well, that's just from years and years and time after time experience. Juan Santos telling me, Dave, not only did he go out there with a bucket of balls, he took a second bucket 
and he put it right on the spot where he wanted to land his serve. He wouldn't go home until 10 balls were inside that bucket. Yeah, he told me one time that he hit uh, 42 balls out of 46. He hit a couple underneath the fence, mm -hmm. but 42 out of 46 in the bucket. He calls it, he said it was just the greatest day of my life. See, there's that ball that, that was, that was in by a lot, but unfortunately for him, it's a short ball and a side out. You heard the score, we're all together at eight. That ball sent over to Marina Park as Rudy Cruz got a little wide here. And that's the thing about big ball, Dave. With a small ball, you can allow that ball to roll out of your hand and actually gather in and you have more control with it over, your, over your head. But as you take your hand here in big ball, Dave, it'll roll up your hand and go right over the roof and you look really silly, kind of like Chevy Chase. Now you've got my interest. In Caddyshack okay. when he hit the ball over mm -hmm. the fence. Yeah. Okay. Look at that punch right there from Rudy Cruz. And there's another one out the door. And Rudy Cruz, Dave, relies a little bit too much on hustling and doesn't quite have the refined game that Juan Santos does. And Dave, hustling will only take you so far. It really won't take you anywhere against the top players as they just expose that. Well, it'll work in doubles, but in singles, with a guy like Juan Santos that knows the angles. And there's that one that goes out the door. Watch what Juan does here. He's a first striker, Dave, but he also is a retriever. And he hit that one too hard. He wanted to clip that side wall high. But look at what Rudy Cruz had to do to win that one rally. He had to lay out and make a miraculous diving cross-court pass. And Dave, this kid is just absolutely spectacular. Juan Santos, he makes it look so easy, just like all the great ones do. And he's just got a feel for the court. It's as though he and the ball are one. That's, that's Rudy Cruz getting fooled there, thinking the ball's gonna go into the left corner because Santos does it again to him, back to back. Santos worked on that exact same shot hundreds of times. Now watch Rudy, he's gonna respect that ball to the left. Santos is gonna go, to go to the two wall serve, Dave, right here. Here goes the two wall serve. Now he gets him going out the other door. It's really unbelievable. Well, it's helpless as a returner when you really have no idea, Dave, where the serve is going. And to make matters worse, Dave, the great players like Juan Santos have eyes in the back of their head, and they can sense you leaning. And then they're able to hold their stroke just long enough to force you to commit. That's called the lag. And then once you've committed, they've sent the serve into the other corner. Well, what I find obvious is that, or, or strange, is that everyone in the park knew that Juan Santos was going to do that two-wall pass after nailing Rudy Cruz twice over there. But Rudy had to say, I'm not going to get fooled three times in a row. I have to go to the left. And he kind of took that first step to the left and then was fooled out the door to the right. That's a... And that's about the only way Rudy Cruz can get into the server's box. Well, that's the only way he has been into the server's box. We've seen that three times in a row now. But yet, Dave, he's within striking distance at 8.14. If you just had been watching for the last five minutes, you'd think that he might be on the verge of getting a one or two, but instead he's fairly close here. Well, he was eight, up eight to six. Okay, I was <laughs> so. tending to some other business. I was appropriately fined for it. Look at that get right there from Santos. His camera angle's so far back, we can't really see some of the intricacies of that, that rally. But Santos in that shadow over there, making some lunging gets. Nice shot right there. That's more of that traditional sidearm small ball stroke. Well, actually, we'll take an instant replay of that last shot. And what you'll see, Dave, is it's somewhat of a sidearm stroke, but he uses his whole body. He spins himself actually past where a sidearm stroke would take you as he has spun his right hip all the way around, and he's actually facing that left side wall. That's the difference, Dave, between the big ball stroke and the sidearm stroke is that you turn so that you're facing your target. In big ball though, you actually overturn. You actually rotate a lot more than you would with the small ball stroke. 
there was the replay there. We just missed the ending. Perhaps we caught it, and I wasn't looking, but I believe the score is wrong here. This is where Santos was at seven to eight, Dave. Mm. And now I believe he's up 16 to nine. I believe it's 14 to 11. 14 to 11, sorry. Santos calling a timeout. Referee Zamora is going to have a throat problem after this tournament's over. We're going to have your problem, so. This is the semifinals, upper bracket. Santos is the number one seed. Rudy Cruz is number four. Santos looks good this tournament, Dave. I agree, but Rudy Cruz is hanging in. Well, th that's what you expect from a number four seed, and Rudy always plays these guys tough. Hmm. He makes it to the semis of every tournament he plays in. He hasn't had that big win. Santos has. And there's a complete miss hit. Unable to get his feet set as he was leaning left, anticipating the serve. Down the right. Boy, and now Rudy trying to respect that serve once again to the right, and it doesn't happen. Rudy has to find some tip. Right here, he's going to go two wall, Dave. No, back down the right. Unbelievable. See how Santos cuts that ball? Unbelievable play. You see, you have to respect this game of Juan Santos, Dave. He cuts balls when he's on the run and slices them, and there's Rudy leaning again. Look at that inside out shot from Juan Santos. This young kid just turned 18 years of age. He's a senior in high school. Wow. Started the season just finishing his junior year. He's a straight A student. He's going to go into the Air National Guard here soon. And I asked him, you know, the money that you've won on this, the pro season, what are you, what are you going to do with it? What have you done with it? He said, I just gave it to my parents to help them with the house payment. I mean, can I adopt this kid? Isn't that kind of a personal question to ask someone what they do with their money? Well, I like to, sometimes you like to hear them say, I'm going to go to Vegas or I'm going to use it for something. You know, you, you kind of are fishing as uh, Santos takes down mm -hmm. Rudy Cruz there, but fishing to hear him say, you know, hopefully I'm going to buy my first car or, you know, I'm going to save up for something that might be inspiring, like maybe buying books for college or something. You're kind of hoping to hear that story, mm -hmm. but he says, I, I'm going to give it to my parents so they can make the house payment. Mm -hmm. That's a great kid right there, Juan Santos, who won three out of the four stops this year on the tour. Vegas was the, the last one where he had two wins. Samson Hernandez had a win. Juan Santos lost in the round of eight against Sal Duenas back in Marina Park in the only tournament that he lost, but Sam Samson Hernandez made it to the finals of all of his tournaments. So therefore, they were only separated by a couple points in the rankings, mm -hmm. and that led to whoever wins this tournament in Vegas is going to be crowned the player's champion. It came down perfectly mathematically, and it was Juan Santos who took down Samson Hernandez in that historic match just a few months back. Hmm. We're going to take a timeout. Game number two coming up in just a bit. Four minutes away, you stick around. More RaceForEight.com action here at the Simple Green U.S. Open of Handball. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's going to bring it home. Mama's okay. going to bring it home. Okay. 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 Come on. Ah! Watch this guy. Oh, oh I... backwards. Oh. Woo! Don't. Oh. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh, no? Okay. Yeah. Here it yeah. goes. Oh, oh my oh. God. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah. Let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. 
It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Some juice. It's gonna be good. She's excited. <laughs> a little bit of kale. Please don't put this on. Line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Try Challenge it. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like it. All right. They might surprise you. I actually took another sip. You saw it. Search we can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. At shelters, you'll discover healthy and loving animals just waiting to become a part of your family. Why wait? You can make a difference in the life of an animal. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person and adopt your new best friend today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle. Rethink what you know about this Vegas icon. your expectations at the Stratosphere Hotel, Casino and Tower. See what's new, up, down, and all around. Are you getting this, honey? Bingo semi-finals! Welcome back to the Simple Green U.S. Open of Handball, Fountain Valley, California, Los Caballero Sports Village for the men's semi-finals. Game number two, Juan Santos takes down Rudy Cruz in the first set. Rudy actually put on a fight here. And then floored by Santos, goes by the name of Banez. You know, Dave, Santos reminds me of a 17, 18 year old Dave Chapman playing three wall, big ball. He just has these unbelievable instincts for the game an incredible shot selection and anticipation. And this, of course, back to the Dave Chapman 1.0, who was about 155 pounds. Dave Chapman 2.0 and 3.0, though, also won national championships, so you can't really disparage that. But having said that, Dave, he does remind me a lot of Dave Chapman. He's slight. He's not quite as powerful as some of these other top guys like Sampson or or maybe Shorty, but he's got this unbelievable presence of mind and instincts for the game. Very calm and collected kid. Score here is two to one. Rudy Cruz down on the ground, and every time Rudy hits the ground, there's a high percentage chance that it's a side out or a loss of a point in well. some fashion. Loss of an opportunity, I should say. In big ball, Dave, your chance of winning a rally when you're on the ground in singles is less than 20%. In four wall, your chances are actually less than 30%. So they're a little bit better. But at the same time, it's not a percentage play, and it's not going to win you a lot of rallies to hit the deck. The crowd does like it, though. 
Rudy Cruz slow to get back on the court here as he's being pushed back and forth. Three to two score, Ibanez goes to that two wall serve. Punches it inside out, back down the right wall and gets that side out. But Excuse you see me, how point. Juan Santos Dave holds that left-handed pass. Forces Rudy Cruz to commit. That time Rudy was waiting for it, Dave. Mm -hmm. Rudy just gave Juan too many opportunities in the front court. He could have. <laughs> Referee is yelling the score out. It's just really annoying. I think, Dave, he wants people on the 405 to know the score. The 405 is about two miles away. He's yelling the score point. It's actually echoing in and out of that uh -huh. court. We don't have to have any microphones on that referee. It's, it's really annoying, to be honest. I don't know if he is mic'd. He is not mic'd. That's, right. that's actually just his, his voice. I've not heard that in any professional sport, to be honest. <laughs> Seven to two. I mean, I guess I heard it in professional wrestling. I think that could be our niche. You and I, Dave. Well, this certainly isn't. <laughs> well, that's obvious. That doesn't mean we couldn't do well in something else. I mean, it's we, might, <laughs> we might fail at that too, but who will know unless we try? The odds are we will. <laughs> that ball down the wall. It just clips the sidewall enough to stay inside instead of going out of play. It's very frustrating. How do you respectfully, Dave, tell a referee to tone it down? Tell the lead ref to tell the referee to tone it down. He's calling point and saying point like we're calling a soccer game here. Well, maybe he's working on his signature call. There, there's a guy in Europe that says goal much louder than that, much more annoying. I didn't feel like annoying you any farther. I think it's more than just one guy, though. Another point. Another point there being called. Juan Santos loves it. He's going into the military. He, he thinks it's great. He loves the discipline. <laughs> this is like basic, pre-basic training for him. Luis Cordova should also be out here then. Surprised he's not. I have a feeling our referee's gonna tell the crowd to keep it down here pretty soon. There's a lot of people in the crowd, Dave. I know uh -huh. that you said you were gonna go and sit in that crowd and give us some audio. I'd love to see that because I think once you get in there, you'll see how infectious it is. There's, there's really literally hundreds and hundreds of people there. The shadows are making it very difficult for us to see from this camera angle, but my gosh. I was actually going to go into the crowd and suntan during my four-hour break. <laughs> Sounds acceptable. Well, working well for several other employees here this week. So you base your work ethic off of? Well, I think everyone should be treated equally and fairly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. I do have a good work ethic and I've, but when I see other people reaping more rewards than myself for a far less work ethic, I, I start to question what, what I'm doing. I don't need to put myself out this much. It's a simple green U.S. <laughs> Open of handball. Men's semifinals upper bracket. Juan Santos, Rudy Cruz battling it out as they always do. And we'll have Shorty Ruiz, and that's going to be some fireworks as he goes up against Samson Hernandez. Shorty's a serving genius, mm. and Samson is, is really tough. Tough to beat. One of the best big ball players in Southern California, one of the best all time. Certainly one of the most popular of all time. That's a huge setup and a mistake. But Rudy does not make him pay, but he does there. Santos does that. Luis Moreno practice swing with no ball. 
Cruz at 2 to 11. And that was consecutive rallies with hand errors from Juan Santos, Dave. We haven't seen him make a hand error in four tournaments. Now he's made two in the last couple of rallies. And Rudy Cruz looked awkward hitting the left-handed fly kill off the wall, but it worked. And I believe, Dave, that was called a skip. I thought that was good. We may take an instant replay of that. No argument from Rudy Cruz. You hear the mariachi band singing. They want the radio turned off, but the mariachi band <laughs> could play. Actually, Dave, they're just tuning their instruments right now. Well, that sounds really good for tuning an instrument. Try to show you a picture of that band here, if we can capture it. Should be a big setup for Rudy. Goes inside, hits that ball. There should be an avoidable. No call from the referee. Not sure what you are watching. Well, he called it earlier. So you're saying an avoidable by this referee standards, but not by someone who knows the game standards. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just wanting to, to clarify that. He called it twice earlier against both oh, players okay. and then didn't call it on the exact same play there where a player sweeps back in front which they've been programmed to do for so many years here. And that ball into the ground from Rudy Cruz, who had a nice little two-point run against Juan Santos of Banez, now serving. It's interesting, Dave, the pace of play between rallies and even during timeouts is so much faster than the four-wall small ball game where you see so many timeouts for various things, glove changes, towel wipes, actual timeouts. And of course, there's the announcing curse, Dave. Just as I say that, we go into a timeout. <laughs> this is a simple green US Open of handball. As I take a quick look, Dave, to look at the broadcast schedule for the rest of today, we mm. have, after this match, it'll be Shorty Ruiz and Samson Hernandez. Strangely enough, tournament directors gave the number one seed to Santos, which he is the number one ranked player. Uh -huh. Samson gets the number two seed. He's also number two. Yeah. A third ranked player is Rudy Cruz, and they gave him the four seed, and then they gave Shorty Ruiz the three seed. So they flipped those for some reason. Well, they apparently, Dave, the tournament committee taking into consideration the type of court they're using here. They said Rudy Cruz actually plays better on the slanted side walls. Well, three out of the four tournaments had this exact same court size in the rankings this last year, with the other one being slightly longer, about three feet longer, which still gives it that mid-size range court. So I, I, I find that argument not really valid here since the rankings come off of three short side, short court, three wall courts with no ceiling. I mean, I could understand that if there were some long courts, but there was no long court play this year. Well, the tournament committee, Dave, is very happy to discuss various seating decisions and other decisions they make, and I'm sure they'll be happy to hear from you. Well, what I'm trying to say is I believe it should be Juan Santos and Shorty playing right now, and then Rudy Cruz down in the bottom bracket against Samson Hernandez. Oh. But I'm not here to judge, I'm here to love. Hmm. The announcers cursing Dave, still in play now, as that 60 second timeout was actually 95 seconds and counting. Okay, make that 97 seconds. Referee is playing by the book, though, Dave. Calling avoidables and <laughs> I guess. Does the book also say you have to scream as loud as you can every time you talk? And Rudy Cruz, Dave, and Fuego right now. Well, he's found a sweet spot in his game and also a weakness in Santos's. Look at that serve. Oh, and it's called out from the line judge. Rudy Cruz, Dave, very even tempered. Got it. Both these guys, Dave, have a tremendous disposition for competition. That's why I told you earlier, Rudy Cruz is just a great guy. And that ball's in, just barely comes inside. Oh, that was a great shot. As he just did put enough cut on that shot to keep it in. Dave, would you call that cut or big ball reverse? What what would you call that? It, it's just style a, of it's hitting. a slight cut. It's a okay. slight cut. They don't they have a full cut that is intended to uh -huh. be tricky on the front wall. That ball yeah. is actually just sliced enough. People say that you can't hop the ball in big ball, but you really the hop is on the front wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's with the cut. How much do you want to cut it? You see Samson Hernandez is one of the only guys who will actually do a reverse cut 
which is just truly remarkable, where he takes his hand, Dave, and comes in and cuts like throwing a screwball in baseball. And he hits it high on the court, and that ball will stay down walls. It's really, truly remarkable. The best part, Dave, of the mariachi band is that it softens the referee's voice just a little bit. Short balls and out the side door are just an automatic side out here. No second serve. So you can listen to the mariachi, Dave, but not Katy Perry. Uh, what do they have against <laughs> Katy Perry? <laughs> what, 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 same thing we all have against mm. I guess. I'm more of a Taylor Swift guy myself, mm. and I think if they would have had that recent hit, we'll never ever be together, mm -hmm. I'm sure it wouldn't have been bounced. Katy Perry just does something to somebody. It's about as annoying as our referee. Hmm. That's what Russell Brand thought. He got out of Dodge after less than a year. And there was a complete miss hit from Juan Santos. And that is the fourth out the door from Juan Santos side out here, just giving Rudy Cruz so many chances, Dave. Well, he's not executing his bucket list right now, and that should have been avoidable. And it is avoidable. This is just something that's part of the tradition of the game. But you know, Dave, in three-wall handball, it's hard not to, to cross back over because if you're stuck on the right, right sideline, the point's pretty much over. That ball hits Rudy as he runs in. I'm surprised that the referee didn't call another avoidable. Did he though? Let's hear. He may have. No. Okay. I was looking at the body English of Rudy Cruz. But it's amazing, Dave. These guys are like poker players. You have no idea if they've just won 10 points in a row or got called for an avoidable that wasn't there. Well, I think it, and you've faced this before too. When you're playing outside and you're doing these extended rallies. Sometimes you don't have enough mojo to even argue with oh, the referee. Oh, I do. Well, you've found ways to invent. I've, I've seen you argue with the referee before the match even started. But here with these guys, they're going back and forth 40 shots. Sometimes it's just hard to want to talk to them about it. You just don't have enough breath. You want to conserve for the next shot. Especially I find when that not only when you're outdoors do you have to yell at the referee, but also the crowd. So it's actually double the argument when you're outside. Well, the, the tough thing for Rudy Cruz is he's wanting to sing along with the mariachi band. That takes some energy too, gets you off your game. Well, Rudy Cruz is actually, Dave, list his favorite hobby is karaoke. He says he goes to a karaoke bar three nights a week. Well, Juan Santos collects bottle caps. You see a little different polarization there. And another side out call. And Dave, it's been a pretty entertaining match to watch, but thus far Juan Santos just about a level higher than his adversary. Just seems to have that extra bit of polish and shot making. That's really been his only liability, Dave, is those short serves and balls that he's hitting out the door. We don't have stats on this, Dave, but because I don't know if players generally play with just one serve, but Juan Santos, Dave, has already faulted 16 times in this match. I don't know what the average is, but it would seem to me that would be above average. Yeah, that's for a guy of this caliber, the number one ranked player missing that out the side door shot so many times. Now he's playing it safe. But then again, Dave, he's also winning a lot of points by going for taking those chances on the first serve. So you, you know, you have to weigh that in as well. And that was 
a very good shot from Juan Santos as that ball came into his body, he adjusted his swing, hit more of an underhand scoop. And Juan just very casually dinking that ball back down the left wall. There it is, game point serves eight. There's a nice paddle, and there he goes into the finals once again. This is. I love when someone tells me, orders me to give someone a hand. It really <laughs> inspires me. That was a nice. To want to put my hands together. Nice game right there from Juan Santos, who took took down in two straight. Rudy Cruz second game, 21 to eight, as we have Shorty Ruiz and his shadow. I mean, personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Shorty Ruiz going up against Samson Hernandez, the beast mm -hmm. from L.A. area. Shorty Ruiz, uh, Ruiz also from that neck of the woods, Downey, California. We'll have that match coming up in about 15 minutes or less. You stick around at racefreight.com. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Science, extreme science for your active lifestyle.